Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Jai, and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to this special, special edition of Focus on Liberia. We are going to be having a debate on the printing of new Liberian banknotes. My guest tonight, the economist, Mr. Samuel P. Jackson. Mr. Jackson, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you very much, Dennis. I'm very, very, very pleased to be here today. I'm, 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 I'm missing Boaka Jalaba, who absconded, who ran away for fear of being uh, decimated and demolished on, on, <laughs> on, 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 on international uh, uh, social media. So he's a very smart young man. A very smart young man. You guys, you see, the thing is, here is a man who belonged to a, a party that ran the country for 12 years, and they cannibalized the monetary sector by infusing $18.151 billion criminally and, diabolic, and diabolically into the money supply. And I was just wondering, what was he going to say to me about the printing? of the 35 billion that he didn't say when they were printing the 18.151 billion. I'm okay. sure he was gonna say something to you, but tonight we have some- That's, That is something that I mean, I would like to know from him, why was he quiet when they were cannibalizing the money supply, the monetary sector? Oh, Mr. And, and Mr. Jackson, what you call cannibalize? How are you gonna use that word? Okay, because, because they, they did cannibalize, cannibalize the monetary sector. Cannibalize means they killed it. it. It killed itself. When you when you when you when you infuse something in 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 in, in, in great quantity, right? With with no proportionality in economics and with no regard to economic science, that's cannibalization. And you know it it it, it creates all kind of anomalies. And now the economy of Liberia is is a is a is a is a patient on life support because of the diabolical and criminal policies of the unity party government. Hmm. Oh, hold that. We got, we got somebody for you. Mr. Bwakai Jaliba told us that uh, he, he has traveled, so he couldn't be here tonight. So don't discuss him in his absence. I have Mr. Alex Chuchu Jones, a financial analyst who's going to be debating you tonight on the printing of new banknotes. So, Let's keep it here. We want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. This is Focus on Liberia, a debate on the money supply, new money being printed in Liberia. Mr. Samuel Jackson is going to be debating on the fourth side, that is, he is for money being printed. And Mr. Alex Jones, is, who is, is going to take the, the opposite. So invite your friend, sit tight, Mr. Jones, and Mr. Jackson will be coming on shortly. In the meantime, enjoy this song by Dre Modeba. So, Mr. Jackson, before we start, you just uh, returned from Liberia. How is this? Oh, you know, um, hey, how you doing, Alex? Uh, Dennis, Liberia has some serious, serious problems. The economy is on life support. And if we don't do something radical and dramatic, you know, to at to attack the fundamental problems, the fundamental ailments of the economy, we are going to have some serious problems. And this is not a one man, a one party, or one government issue. This is a national emergency. You know, uh, uh, a lot of the problems that 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 we're seeing today comes from a lack of uh, a foresight and planning. You know, and future planning. And I'll give you some example. You know, like. Aggregate demand in economics is the basis of, of, of economic development, you know, create jobs, income, consumption, you create demand, and then there's a supply. So when that circular flow is created with money, 
with with uh, with our money going around in our circle, and there's an intermediation of the circle of flow by financial institutions. What happens is that you have a thriving economy, and then you, pro you provide prosperity to your people. Okay, <clears throat> but you have to do it within uh, the confines of an economic development paradigm that makes a lot of sense and that is based upon economic science. So let me give an example. Liberia since 1944, since 1944, has opened its doors very wide. Supply side economics, economic liberalism, where they've opened that economy and they believe the top down, you know, the top down economic development, grant concessions to, 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 to foreign companies that will create jobs, provide income, transfer skills, and hopefully they'll build linkages to the national economy. Unfortunately, that has not happened because we've concentrated on the extractive sector. Okay. When we came from war in 2003, the, what took us to war was the inequality that came about because of the fundamental problems within the economy. The whole uh, top-down economic development, supply side, Washington consensus led us to 14 years of brutal war. Because when you have horizontal inequality, inequality in economic <clears throat> based upon ethnicity, where you have only 5% of the population producing 90% of the output and the income, that society is not a sustainable society. So when we, when we crafted the Accra Comprehensive Peace Agreement, the thought was that there will be a radical departure from business as usual, where we will have a bottoms up economic development program to grow indigenous entrepreneurs, you know, we will make, you know, uh, uh, smallholder farms, we will have small scale manufacturing, we'll be involved in services, hospitality, and those kinds of businesses that are sustainable for generations. And then you have economic transformation. Oh, unfortunately, right. unfortunately mm -hmm. that never happened. So we are reaping the benefits, rather we are reaping the, 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 the uh, dire circumstances because we did not plan effectively in a post-war democratic dispensation that God gave us nearly 17 years of peace. And that 17 years of peace has produced the poorest country on the planet. Thank, thank you. Now I want to welcome Mr. Alex Chuchu Jones, our financial analyst, who's going to be debating with Mr. Sam Jackson tonight. Alex, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Jai. And uh, again, uh, thank you to Minister Jackson. Uh, for taking his time and welcome back to the U.S. Thank you very much. I must thank you too for getting, uh, for agreeing to join us on a very, very short notice. I think it was like 30 or 40 minutes after uh, Mr. Jaliba was not coming. I tried to contact Mr. Jackson. He was not available. So we decided to cancel the show. But Mr. Jackson is hot. He wants to debate this topic. And that's what we are here for. So let's go right into it. Okay. So here are the rules. <clears throat> uh, for the first time, I'm going to give you four minutes each to tell me and my audience why you believe what you believe when it comes to the printing of the new banknotes. For Mr. Jackson, you believe that uh, you are for and Alex is against. So you're going to tell me first why you are for this and Alex is going to tell me why he's against it for the first four minutes. Okay. So you are not attacking anybody, just tell me your side in the first four minutes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, After okay. that, let, let, me, let me go through. After that, we, you're going to come back for three minutes to rebut what the person said. Okay. Thank you very much. Then we give you two minutes each for cross-examination. You will be asking uh, Alex two questions. Alex will be asking you two questions. We will take two questions from me, and then we'll take three questions from the floor. Then you make your closing statements, and we close the debate tonight. Well, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, Alex and, and, and Dennis. I'm very much gratified to be, you know, debating an issue uh, that is extremely important to the future of the country and, and, and especially for macroeconomic stability. The printing of the money is, is not an end in itself. Because oh, okay. are, you, are you starting your first four minutes now? Of course, of course. Oh, oh, okay, go yes. ahead. Yes, I want to set that stage so we can start the timing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I understand. Okay. All right. You have to give me a few more seconds because you interrupted. Yeah, yeah. No, you are, you are, you are starting afresh now. Okay, thank you very much. So thank we're you starting the much. debate. After a coin toss, Mr. Yeah. Jackson will go first on why he's for it. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I am for the printing. I am for printing new banknotes for the following reasons. Between 2016 and 2018, the United Party government and its central bank criminally and diabolically infused $18.151 billion into the money supply. They did that with no regard to economic science, with no regard to what we call the quantity theory of money. There has to be a close linear relationship between an economic growth rate and the money supply. The money supply grew cumulatively between 2016 and 2018 by 70%, while the average growth rate in that period was 7%. Another anomaly that we see is because of the lack of financial inclusion, we call it financial exclusion in Liberia, only 7% of Liberians own bank accounts. Because 7% of Liberians own bank accounts, and then you have a large informal economy, most of the money that was dumped into the economy found its way outside of the formal banking system. Because the fund is set outside of the formal banking system, and because of the quantum of it, what it did, it created a disequilibrium in the economy. The first thing it did, you saw the rapid depreciation of the Liberian dollar. 28.5% headline inflation in, in 2018. We also saw the greatest reduction in purchasing power in the last 50 years. Now, also because of the of the of the of the of the lack of economic science in the infusion of that money. 95% of M2, which is aggregate demand, the Liberian dollar portion of the aggregate, aggregate money, okay, money stock, is outside of the banking system. And what that does is you have a truncated circular flow. Banks <coughs> are supposed to intermediate financial transactions or commercial transactions. So in terms of a, to have a high percentage of GDP, in Kenya, for example, more than 50% of the GDP is conducted through M-Pesa. We do not have a robust payment system. So in addition to bringing, to bringing that money back into the money supply, and one of the only ways that you can do it is to print new money and recall the old money to demonetize the old money. The quantum of 35 billion should not be dumped into the economy. The first step is retrieval of what is out there. And you have to, and then as we go, and we have this conversation, I know my time is running out. I will try to tell you what the criteria or the requirements should be for retrieval in terms of, you know, somebody bringing in a certain quantum, like 5 million must have a business registration, must have paid taxes, and all of those things there to ensure that the illicit economy, people who have earned the money illegally do not benefit from that, from the retrieval of that money into the money supply. But it is extremely important to understand that we need to also address the fundamental problems within the economy, that's lack of productivity. We have a very narrow economy. We need to expand the economic base Okay. But because we have such instability in the macroeconomy, and because the money 
is so undervalued. And because the money is not within the banking system, the first thing, we have to play triage. When a, when, a, when a patient comes into the hospital, when he's bleeding, no matter what other problem he has, you have to stem the bleeding. The bleeding, the hemorrhage happens to be the, 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 the inflation and rapid reduction in purchasing power. Thank, thank you. Mr. Jones. Well, thank tell you very us, much. Tell uh, us in four minutes. Uh, sure. All right. First of all, I would like to uh, first say again, thanks for uh, hosting this discussion or debate. Uh, it's always an honor to discuss uh, our economic, social, and political issue uh, rather than attack each other. So I'm very happy to be on this uh, uh, part of this uh, debate. Um, having said that, I also want to uh, call on the Liberian people to come together to formulate means by which they can grow their economy, live together, and uh, prosper. And what's been happening over the last uh, weeks or days is uh, very disheartening. And I would like to use this as an opportunity to, to appeal for dialogue between the government and all parties to stop the, the, uh, the political unrest. Uh, as Mr. Mr. Jackson well know, that you cannot have economic growth in a political situation that is uh, dire, you know, where you have people in the streets uh, vandalizing and so forth. Uh, I, I'm opposed to printing your new money on a, for a very simple reason. Number one, I'm not an economist and I would not profess to be one, but uh, uh, my area of expertise is in banking and finance, and I have over a decade experience, practical experience, and academic experience in that area. And one of the things that my discipline has taught me is that before you can make a conclusion or come to any new policy, you must research it thoroughly, empirically, before you can decide what's the best course of action. So what just based on our one reason, there was no research done by the Central yeah. Bank of Europe. Not that true. is published. Not true. Not that true. is published. That is published on the ministry on, on the central bank website as of today, uh, and I checked it. That gives an empirical analysis as so if we do print new money or change the currency, is going to uplift the economy or is going to to uh, circumvent the developmental and the economic uh, shortfalls that we're having that we are currently having. Secondly. All of the policies that the government has attempted so far, the economic policy, uh, has not achieved any tangible economic result. Uh, within 18 months, they, uh, they tried to uh, uh, reduce the exchange rate by purchasing dollar on the market over $15 million, uh, and that did not work. The rate still high or even higher. Um, they also came up with a poor, poor agenda uh, Liberia Human Development Index shows no increase. Uh, Liberia growth, there's no growth. In fact, there's been a decline. So if you're telling me now that the same people who came up with all these ideas, these uh, uh, the, the president's economic team, and they have never succeeded in any, and two, there's no empirical evidence to show that if you change the money that you have what Mr. Jackson is proposing, then it doesn't make any sense. My approach would be, and I've always called for steady the issue, get Liberians together who are in this area, let them have a working team, maybe about a month or two months, and they can come out and look at all of the options on the table before arriving to one. And lastly, uh, I would like to also say that um, the, the uh, economic policy in Liberia uh, seems to be very confused. It's almost like a magic box theory where you get up one morning and you decide Let's join the IMF. The next morning, you uh, be a part of the IMF program. And as uh, the minister just said, our problem, our problem previously, previously has been uh, structural adjustment in Africa. We've had most African countries suffer as a result of that. Our problem extends to where there is no, uh, there's, there's no uh, ownership in the banking sector or in the uh, corporate sector in Liberia. So to come out and change the money and expect it, it to yield any economic or financial result is just laughable in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are discussing the uh, printing of the new banknotes. Mr. Samuel Jackson is for it. Mr. Alice June is against it. And uh, so, Mr. Jackson, your rebuttal. Oh, okay. First of all, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if Alex was listening to all the points I laid out. And he was very sentimental and emotional on, on, on the issues, and he did not talk about economic science when it, as it relates to monetary economics. And, but he did, he did give us a caveat that he's not an expert in monetary economics. So we have to basically, you know, let him uh, uh, cut him some slack in that area. Okay, but let me, let me, let me give you uh, some information that, that, that you may not have. There was a study done by, the, by a team, a very proprietary study that was done, the monetary aggregate study that I was a part of, and that monetary aggregate study was done to determine what is the quantum value of currency in circulation, both M1 and M2. That was, that was done, okay? And then that study was also done to determine what would be the optimum, the optimum quantity of money that should be in the money supply, Liberian dollar that should be in the money supply based upon the current level of economic activities. And then we also look at the circular flow, financial intermediation and financial inclusion. And I don't, understand, I don't know if, if, uh, if, if, if Mr. Jones knows the degree of financial inclusion in Liberia. Liberia is heavily financially excluded. Only 7% of Liberians have bank accounts, whereas in Ghana is 50%. 93% of Kenyans use mobile money and 50% of GDP is conducted over, GDP is conducted over M-Pesa, which is the uh, Safaricom uh, mobile money system. The reason why the money, most of the money is outside of the banking system, two reasons, lack of financial inclusion and a high degree of informality. We have a workforce where 79.5% are in the informal sector, a high degree of informality. With that high degree of informality, it takes the money out of the banking system. Then you have what we call a truncated circular flow. That truncated circular flow has given rise to three parallel financial structures in the country. One with the full ass, one with the Lebanese and one with the Indians. They do not use the banks. Only 4% of them have trust in the banks. They don't have trust in the banks because of operational efficiency of the banks. When they go get their money, that the money is not available because a lot of transgressions, economic transgressions happened in the previous regime where the central bank owes the commercial banks, $3 billion. The government of Liberia owes the central bank almost $400 million. Thank you, thank you Mr. Jackson. Your okay. three minutes is out. Okay, uh, just to respond, first of all, let me just clarify. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be an economist to study economic condition around the world. In fact, the current chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank Jerome Power is not an economist, he's a lawyer. So I just want to clarify that. I think I have every expertise and experience to speak on economic and financial issues. I have over a decade of practical banking and finance experience with some of the leading banking and financial institutions in the world. I have written about this subject, I've studied it academically. So I think I'm very qualified in understanding what M1 and M2 is. And, and, and what, uh, as he termed as financial informality uh, and a lack of inclusion. So I think let's clarify that. I'm more than competent to, to speak on these matters. In fact, I work currently work on this matter. I currently work at my bank uh, in terms of regulation. So let's clarify that. And I wouldn't be here talking if I didn't feel comfortable about it. So let's go back to the issue. What Mr. Jackson is talking about has nothing to do with the money. If you want to include Liberians in the economy, 
it has nothing to do with changing the currency. You talk about Ghana. Ghana did not change the currency in order to grow the economy. Ghana had a very comprehensive financial uh, 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 approach to the economy. One is they indigenized the economy by bringing, putting most of the sector in the hands of Liberia, in, the, in the hands of Ghanaians. Same thing with Rwanda. Rwandans are the one who is controlling, who are controlling the economy. In Liberia, you have nine banks of which eight of them are controlled by uh, uh, non-Liberians. So if you want to have inclusion, then maybe our finance ministry and central bank should design a program that will allow Liberians to own, have ownership or higher ownership in these banks. It has nothing to do with changing the money. There is no, he mentioned a study. If, you, if the government of Liberia did a study, I have not seen it and, it and it has not been published and I will challenge Mr. Jackson to please provide the moderator that study so that it can be read. There's no study that has been available on the, on the Central Bank website that gives an empirical uh, study on this issue. That's just like there was no study done in Liberia over the last 18 months. I have been one of those who have been advocating to get Liberian fin financial uh, economists together to study the area before they carry on any more policy. What they're doing is just getting up every morning because of uh, attention and political uh, 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 maneuvering is deciding, let's do this and let's do that. We're all, as a financial analyst, I cannot read a company or I cannot speak on a company's performance or, or, or give a recommendation if I first have not gone and reviewed the company's balance sheet, study the company market, the company's activities, look, study the economy, and Liberians, unfortunately, uh, had no plan. This is something that just came out in the last, in the last uh, month. After they fail in terms of Thank buying you. the currency on the street, they Thank fail you. giving Liberian ownership in the... Uh, Thank, thank you, Mr. Jones. But why are you not watching the time when it comes to Mr. Jones, Mr. Mr. Ja? I mean, he went thank, 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 all the time. Okay, so since you gave him extra time, you must also give me extra time. No, I, I, I call into time, Mr. Uh, uh, no, 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 you didn't call. I, I, I had to, I had to do this. Okay, but let me tell you something. No, no, no. Said, this is no. I've been, I've been dull of him again. Hold on, hold on. No, hold on. That's no, fine. No, it's okay. No, it's, but it's no, what, that's fine. Let, no, 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 I'm coming ahead. to what the next no. thing. Let's make no, progress, I, please. Let's yeah, make progress. No, but hold on, but hold but, on. But let's I'm, this is my, this, this is my time to talk. No, but, but you, why are you talking? Why are you going to talk? I'm saying to you, I'm being, I'm being double team again. That's fine. No, 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 no. I'm saying, okay. hold on. It's time for questioning. This is time for you to ask Ellis question. No, but okay. Basically, I will use my time to ask Ellis question to educate the public on some of the, 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 the misconception and the misunderstanding that exists uh, in this conversation today. When he says that- okay. oh, hold, on, hold on, Mr. Jackson. Hold on, I want us to observe what, what we're doing. Your first four minutes was for you to, intro, to give your side. Yes. The second was to give a rebuttal. Yes. Now we are coming to the third one for you to ask him question and he asks you question. Okay, you say but, you ask questions? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, but if I'm going to ask a question, can I, I, I maybe I can preface it by, 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 by I'm making a statement before I make it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Go, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, first of all, he said there's nowhere on the website there's any study. I want him to show me on the Federal Reserve's website any study that is done on a regular basis to determine the quantum value of the currency that's going to be put out. If he can show me that, I would, I would clap for him. He needs to do that. Number two, when you're talking about all of the fundamental issues, liberalization, equity participation in banks, those are all critical issues. Those are all issues that need to be resolved. But you have an issue that is staring you right in the face when I'm talking about <clears throat> money as a store of value, and that store of value has been cannibalized by the previous regime, then you have, you have a currency, is a worthless currency, and you don't have control over that worthless currency because 95% of that worthless currency is out of the, uh, of the banking system. So, What's your question? Wait a second. 
what would Mr. Jones do now? I just want to ask him, what will he do now outside of changing the currency to bring about macroeconomic stability and restore faith in the Liberian dollar in the short term? In the short term, in the immediate term, what are his recommendations? Good. Mr. Well, very good question, uh, uh, Minister Jackson. Of course, I, I will go back and don't, see. Don't, don't call me Minister Jackson. You know I'm not a minister. You do, you see, you, you, you do. You, you've see. been a minister before. Once you're a minister, you're always a go minister. Ahead, go, go ahead, Alex. Go ahead, Alex. With okay, but he's interrupting my time. You've been, a minister of, you've, been, you've been a minister of state for economic affairs. Is that correct? Go ahead, answer the question. Third part of my service, the government of Bureau, I prefer that you refer to me as Sam. Okay, fine, but, 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 let, but let's, get it, let, let's get it right. That once you're president, former president or minister, that title remains with you for life. Mr. Hold on, Mr. Jackson. Okay, hold on, hold on, Sam. If you want me to call you, Sam, if you want me to call you, Sam. And I move forward. Yes, hold on, Ms. hold on. Mr. That's, Jackson. That's, that is not relevant to the debate. No, it, it is, I mean, he called me, right, but it's, it, yeah, I, yeah. I think it is because he, he's never no. called me Mr. Minister before, never. And every time he comes on, he comes on with this new thing. He think he's cute. He plays no. cute. I mean, no, oh, okay, that's why I said this is not this is not relevant to the topic. This is yeah. not a political. Stan, you, you Stan, you trying to Stan, you ask a question, Mr. Jones. You're trying to send a subliminal message to the audience. I'm, I'm Stan, not, Stan, I'm, you I'm, ask a question. Yeah. Let me answer the question. Go ahead, go okay, ahead, answer the question. Let me answer the question. You first said that you wanted me to uh, show you on the website. West study on the Federal Reserve or on the Central Bank website. So I'm not sure which Central Bank you're talking about. So can you clarify? I'm talking about on the quant. I, I said anything that relates to the quantum value of the currency outstanding. A study that was done that to determine how much how much currency is outstanding and what should be done about reducing inflation. Are you talking about Liberian Central Bank well, or you talking about, about, I'm talking about any Central Bank? I'm okay. All about right. So so. So, so okay, so let me let me let me address that now that you clarify. First of all, the one of the one of the major uh, responsibility of the central bank is to research and study the economy on an ongoing basis. And if you go to the Grand Central Bank, there's a, in fact a deputy minister for economic policy. That's his job to have an ongoing study on every issue, including inflation, including currency, including M1, M2, and M3, to study the banking sector. And what I can tell you that they've done a poor job or they haven't done it at all because those studies are not there. What they've done is what they're taking the IMF. Let me, Let me answer the question. Let me answer the question. I live in the Liberian Central go Bank. Ahead, I'm muting him. But so, the man keep interrupting me, so you have the my time. No, I, I muted him, so go ahead. Okay. So I go, I, I live on the Liberian I live on Central Bank's uh, uh, website. Like I said, currently I work in that area. So as I review their policies on, Alex, on an ongoing basis. Alex, so the, the, the me, question I have, is, I, I have to put my answer in the context. Mr. Okay, Mr. go ahead. If I have two minutes, let me put my answers in the context. So, okay, so go, like go, when people go ahead. can be educated. So number one is, one of the reasons why I said that it's a bad idea because the, the government economic team has done a poor job in terms of understanding. They flip flop on every issue. A month or two ago, they were talking about uh, budget <laughs> harmonization. That was to them the golden rule that once they came up and harmonized the budget, everything would be all right. They've done that. Okay. Uh, what has happened? Inflation has not gone down. Uh, the currency rate continues to, to, to weaken. So that's the same people who coming back and saying, oh, now the, the most brilliant idea is let's change the currency and we'll solve a problem with no study. If the minister, the deputy minister, the deputy governor of the bank would do his job, then he would be able to furnish people like me and you with that, with that study. That's what he's been paid to do. And if you don't know how to do that job, maybe some of us can help you to do it, to research the Liberian economy, including the money stuff. I'm not done. We have a moderator. They may keep it around. But, 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 but your two minutes is up. Go, go, go well, ahead. you interrupted me for over well, a minute and a half. Alex, Alex, please go minutes. ahead with Take your five question. Minutes. Answer. Okay. Take five minutes. So first, if the, if the people in the government, if the president will hire qualified and experienced people, people who are current with these things, he won't be having a problem of changing policy every three months. So there's been no study. And if you have the study, 
please provide it. And you cannot jump to an economic to change your whole currency with no study. You are a financial person, and I'm sure you will know that. Furthermore, you just had a you just had an economic dialogue that made a bunch of recommendations, which I call was useless. They have not even followed in that, with, within that economic or, or dialogue proposal. There's nothing such a change in the currency. This is a new thing. They talked about youth employment. They talked about setting up a secretariat. You were at that conference. Why wouldn't they implement? Now, let me go to your question. You asked me what, I, what would I do if I was making policy in Liberia? The first thing I would do is I would capitalize and set up Liberia corporations. Another thing I would do, I would make sure we have a stock exchange that you were talking about, because you cannot have any, any developing economy without a stock exchange, because you won't have capital. So those are the things where our ministry should focus on. They should, yes. they should one, focus on our banking sector, make sure that Liberians are running the Liberian banks and not foreign us. They should, they should come up with plans, take some of the $300 million, maybe about 25% of it, and put it directly into things like farming. Set up mechanized farming that will cost that will start to produce food, export it, some of them, Thank and you, then you, your foreign exchange will gain foreign exchange from those things. That, so Alex, the problem is simple. Alex, th thank you. Now, now it's your turn to ask Mr. Jackson a question. Mr. Jackson, you you perhaps you are one of the most experienced Liberian uh, financial individual. You worked in previous governments. My question to you. What did you do all these years in terms of all your, 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 your expertise within the government that you have not been able to, 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 to influence them to do these simple things like one, like you mentioned of Fargo, setting up a, a Liberian like exchange, two, by making sure Liberian own the economy by the banking sector, opening the, bank, owning the banking sector, the telecom sector, uh, and, and, and many of the other sectors in Liberia. Why Liberians are spectators in their own economy? And what have you done? Uh, whether it was at the forum, whether it's your relationship with past and current government to influence these people to uh, uh, do these things, these, these simple economic uh, measures. And, last, and, and lastly, the last question I, ha I have for you is that um, why do they keep changing policy? And why do you think that with all having researched the policy, the, the, the country economy, they will be able to come up with the right answer. Okay. Well, first of all, let me, let me just basically clarify some fallacies that came out of uh, Mr. Mr. Johnson's uh, long-winded, you know, expose. When I asked him a simple question about macroeconomic stability in the short run, he had no answer for that. He talked about the stock market, that's not shut run. He talked about liberalization. That's not shut run. I wanted measures based upon economic science that would decrease, that would decrease the money supply, that would also decrease inflation and improve the price level, which is the primary responsibility of the central bank. Okay. The other thing Mr. Jones needs to understand is that there is a bureau a research bureau that is headed by Musa Kamara at the Central Bank. They do a lot of research. They're moving toward financial inclusion. There's a girl that called uh, Miata Kute. She's a champion of financial inclusion. There's another girl in there, I think, Brooklyn, work, working on capital market development. Because he doesn't know, he assumes that these things are not taking place. I went to Liberia. I've been there for five months, and I was studying the objective conditions in the country. Unlike him, who stays in America, doesn't go to Liberia and <laughs> dive into the objective circumstances in the country. I went to 10 counties. I went to two border towns. I interviewed the Lebanese people within the Lebanese business community. I interviewed people within the Fula business community. I discovered the whole issue of where your money is. And your money is outside of the, 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 the banking system. You have, a, and, and I keep talking things you're not even responding to. Why do you have a trun truncated circular flow? You have a truncated circular flow because of the high degree of informality. I talk about the lack of a ro ro robust payment system, visa, 
MasterCard, mobile money. He doesn't handle these kind of things here because maybe he doesn't know how they work. He doesn't understand what a circular flow is. So I can understand. He said he's uh, does not have enough experience. So let him listen to someone who has the experience, who went there, who did a deep dive, and who recommended that for the immediate macroeconomic stability, you have to put the money within the banks so you to make the circular flow, the, 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 the money circular flow complete. That will mean financial inclusion. Bottom line, and that will yeah, happen. Go, go ahead, I, go I, ahead, I, uh, Jackson. Okay. Again, like you said, I never said no, that. No, Alex, not, not you. Jackson, I, Mr. Yeah, Jackson, are you done? Okay. Are you so what, what I'm saying is, I you, asked you a simple what question. Means. What would you do in the short run if you don't change the currency for macroeconomic stability? So, so we didn't have an answer for that. And what, what would you do about the high inflation rate? You don't have an answer for that. What would you do about the quantum value of money outside currency? outside of the banking system. You don't have an answer for that. You don't have an answer for the fact that you have an external sector, a, a, a current account deficit, you have a high trade deficit. You're not even talking about the reserve and your, uh, your SDR, all of those external sector data. You're no. not even speaking about that. You, okay. You're speaking like a layman. You're speaking on emotion. You're speaking on passion. No. Uh, you have, Mr. Oh, Mr. Oh, oh, Jackson. You went Mr. Minutes, Jackson. So I got to Mr. Let Jackson, when we finish, let's speak in. No, 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 you are, you, you are, you are attacking. You gotta speak to, you gotta speak to the issue. Yeah, but I'm speaking the issue. But let him give me a roadmap for economic recovery. Tell me, this is the first step I do. The second step I do. No. The first step I do. Let him, let him tell the audience that. Go ahead, tell okay. the audience. All right. So, so again, you went for five minutes. Something. You tell us what you would do. Okay. Again, if the problem. Problem with, with the problem with some of you is you're focused on personal attack so much that you don't see what somebody is saying. I gave you three answers. You talk about inflation. What's causing the inflation? The inflation is caused by excess money, not the actual face value of the currency. Whether you change it or not, it doesn't matter. Every day in America, they recycle the money, they change bank, bank notes, they just bought a new uh, $20 bill. Does that affect inflation? No. The second thing you talk about what I would do, I gave you three things I would do. I said, one is we have to get control of our banks. Liberians have to control the bank. That, that will create confidence. Uh, the, the, the Liberians around the world will have to invest in, and the government will have to invest in Liberian corporation. You talk about foreign, uh, foreign deficit. What's causing the deficit? The reason that we have this deficit is because we're importing everything. We're not making anything. So it, it doesn't make any practical sense for you to change the currency and still have to import from China and import from Nigeria, your currency will still devalue until, and you can't have corporations in Liberia or you, can, you cannot say inclusion when you don't have banks. Your banks are owned by Nigerians and Ghanaians. So when people like you start to manage our banks, Liberians who claim to know economy and claim to be financial experts, they're sitting around into politics when they should be managing the banks. Okay, and the last question I want to point on here is, I don't have to go to Liberia to read economic analysis. No one has been to Pluto, no one has been to Mars, but yet they know more about it than, than anything else. I research these things, I've been to Africa, I've been invited to countries around where I provided financial solutions. Unlike many people in Liberia who has never worked in finance, they came straight from school, and today, some of them are holding positions in the country. At least I'm dealing with practical, real-world scenarios. And yeah, that is to produce. say, if you do not produce, your, if you continue to have inflation, and your economy will continue to be wicked. Th th That's a you. fundamental fact. That's not an opinion. Thank you. M Mr. Mr. Jackson, I have a question for you. Yeah. On the, uh, on the studies, because you talk about the study that was... Mr. Jones asked a question on what study that was done and where was it published? And you talk about that study. What tool was used to, to, uh, to come up with that study? And where is that, pub where is that published? OK. First of all, it, let, well, let's be very clear. Central banks study almost everything. But they concentrate on the monetary aggregate. 
The monetary aggregate study is never released to the public because number one is it, it, you, you don't want people speculating based upon the studies done by the central bank. Central bankers, when, they, when they're ready to vote, for example, he knows that, in terms of the open market committee of the, of the Federal Reserve in his bank. Com studies that accompany that, but do you see them put them on their website? No. What I'm trying to explain is that we did a monetary aggregate study, which was a proprietary study to determine the quantum value. And he needs to understand what the quantum value is, how much currency actually is existing within it. Mr. Jones, do you know what was the quantum of Liberian dollar in the M2 in, in, in the last quarter? Do you know how much it was? I, I, I know because it's on, the, it's on the website of the central bank. So by, let me answer that question. You ask me a question, it? let me answer the question. What was yes, it? that information. That what information is given every tell quarter. Me that, tell me that information. What was the quantum? You can go on a librarian central okay, so bank. Okay. And I, I couldn't quote no, here. No. What I'm but saying is, you, you, you said that you've been on the ground. You said that you talked. No, but but no, but but then, I'm telling you, if you go and research my papers, I, I reference some of these, some of these numbers. Okay. 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 Lock it. Okay. Dennis, let me just educate the public. Since he, he think he knows all, maybe the public needs to be. In 2016, you 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 are asking a specific question. So if you yeah. answer it, let me. No, let me, but you can't answer, let me provide the answers. Let me provide the answers. In 20 in 2016 in 2016, no, no, are you providing answer to about the study and the tools that were used and what was the objective of that study? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. First of all, the approach and methodologies of the study was two things. We went out there, we spoke to people. We collected data, and then we came in and we had uh, econometric software like ARA and STATA and advanced STATA that we used. And I also used computable general equilibrium to look at the, 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 the effect on different sectors of the economy. So we did a survey. We did a survey of, I told you, the, 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 the various commercial communities in the country. So, so that's your answer there. In, in, in 2016, before the United Party criminally, diabolically, and foolishly started to infuse money into the in, in, LeBron dollar into the money supply, there was $10.83 billion December of 2016. They infused $5 billion. In 2017, it went up to $17 billion. Then they criminally infused another 13 billion. When they did that, what happened was the, 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 the linear relationship between the economic growth rate and the money supply went out of kilter. Hmm. The, if, you, if you know what the QTM is, the quantitative theory of money, there has to be a close linear relationship between economic growth rate and money. In the Liberian state situation, you're talking about what tools we use. We use regression, and we found out that the Pearson coefficient, okay, the relationship between the economic growth rate and the money supply is 0.84. So the money supply grew by a quantum of 70%, and you have only the average economic growth rate of 0.7%. Okay. So now, so what you did was you destroyed your economy. The money is out there. What you need to do is to bring back that money. He's, mm -hmm. he's not talking about why we're, bring, we're bringing the money back into the banking system. And we're going to use, and they're going to use tools to keep the money in Mr. the bank. Mr. Mr. Jones. Mr. Mr. Financial Jackson. inclusion, mobile money, digital mm -hmm. payments, and all of those to improve financial inclusion. The okay. Central Bank of Liberia just concluded a financial inclusion strategy plan for four years, which will be released shortly. Right. You need to go to talk to Miata Kute. Okay. In, in I want to inject something before you before you learn. You keep saying the money is outside the banking system. Yeah. How does printing new money bring back that money into the banking system? And how does that control inflation? Thank you very much. That's, that's the best question you asked tonight, because that's the question that Alex is not asking. 
the question is, you're talking about if, if, you, if you print and infuse is one system, is the bad system. What you want to do is to, to print the money and recall, demonetize the old money. So you have between 18 and 21 billion Liberian dollars in the money supply. Between 18 and 21. I'm seeing the quantum, it looks like it's like 20, more like 29 billion. Because if in 2016, if the money was 10.83 and you infuse 18.151 billion, that should be 29. And then they said the bring 4 billion. So you bring it down to 24 to 25 billion. So that should be the quantum in the money supply. What you want to do, because that money is completely devalued and if there's no trust in that money, you want to retrieve that money. That's why you're printing new money, new currency, and new bank notes. When, then, you, so then you will have criteria, requirements for retrieval. For example, somebody brings in $5 million, which is equivalent of 25 thousand US dollars. You want to ask him number one, where is your your business registration? Where's your tax receipt? And then you're not changing money over the counter. You're forcing people to open bank accounts. Mr. Jones knows that in the United States today, people, uh, the, the, the authorities look very badly at people who use cash. You, they want answer, everything to be answer the question. I, I want to bring in I want to bring in the column. You are, you are Can busy. I respond to his question, his answer before you bring the call out after the call? It doesn't matter. Yeah, after 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 the call. Okay, respond because I have to do. I have to uh, enable this. Okay. So go ahead the, the issue, the, the discussion here today is simple. All right, by changing the Liberian currency, will it grow the economy? Will it reduce inflation? The answer is emphatically no. It has never done so with any country that I know of around the world. In fact, Mr. Jackson was. In government, when the, uh, the, the interim government of Liberia changed the currency to the liberty, what happened? It devalued because they had no backing. If you do not ex export, whether you change your currency 20 times or 100 times, it does not matter. There's a case study in Zimbabwe. They tried changing the currency. They tried even printing higher denominations. And what happened? Inflation, they had a hyperinflation. It never solved the problem. So no country around the world, I haven't seen any economic study where, where there is proof that just by printing new money, you will get a better economy. Can yeah. I give you an example? Yeah, this man went for four no, minutes. Me the order. I know Mr. Jackson have a way of bullying everybody. No, I know, but I'm not one of those people. He, let me, he spoke let me, let me for over four minutes. Jackson. Mr. Jackson, that is hard. I just want to ask him a question. Alex, Alex, hold on, hold on. I want to bring a caller on the line. Call out your name and where you calling from. Yeah, uh, this is uh, this is Emmerich Nickel. You know, I sure I've had this debate with uh, Mr. Jackson, but I was in a in a meeting. All right, uh, uh, Dennis, are, are you following? Yeah. So Emmerich, we, we we gave you a little bit of okay, we'll, we'll all right, uh, of leeway to, to ask more questions. Go ahead. Yeah, so the question there, uh, I, 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 I'm listening to Mr. Jackson, right? I just got on, you know, I'm so sorry I came late. I'm listening to Mr. Jackson, you know, he's speaking a lot of terminologies and so jargons and so, but the reality, uh, the practical aspect, uh, when we look at aggregate demand in, in Liberia, when you look at the money supply, you look at aggregate demand, all right? Aggregate demand, it's, it's, it's simple. You know, the final goods and services in any, I mean, any economy is the aggregate demand. So if you look at the goods and services, right, we don't have, we have very, very low output. So our aggregate demand is low. But if you print more money, if you look at what happened in Venezuela, in Zimbabwe, you print more money. Senator Jackson is saying that he's using one measure, right, just one measure because he wants to know the quantum I mean, value of the circulation. But this is the point. In his report, they said uh, about 6% is circulating in the bank. And the, uh, the only independent variable there is the uh, total circulation. So if you know that 6% is circulating in the, in, the bank, in the banking system, and then you have 94% out there with low aggregate demand, 
It simply means that you don't have control over the uh, black market, right? So you find almost our entire monetary system is being run through the black market. What are you going to do? My thing, you have to put in systems, we have to put in structure, structures, measures that will create the confidence in the banking sector. When you have confidence in the banking, banking sector, then people will start to buy into putting money into the banking sector. So to me, Mr. Jackson is putting the cart before the hearse. So Mr. Jackson, what are you going to do with aggregate demand right now? Our aggregate demand is low. Goods and services, our product, everything is low. Very, very low. You print money only because you want to do the quantum value. What are you going to do on the flip side of it? Moving from inflation to hyperinflation to recession. What are you going to do with that? Can I answer? Okay. Can I answer? I, yeah, go, go ahead. I'm okay. sorry. It I'm was sorry. my turn. I would give you the floor. Well, you can hold your answer. Mr. Jackson, if you want to be Mr. Jackson for, for a little bit. Well, I said I would give you the floor. I would give you the floor. No, I said Emre can hold the line and let uh, Mr. Jackson answer the question. Okay. La, the Liberian economy, I want you to look at it in terms of the context. Okay. The Liberian economy is a sick patient with a lot of debilitating illnesses. Hold on a second. Hold on. Am I me? Okay. Mr. Uh, so, so, Alex, your, your question. What what uh, okay. we're talking about inflation okay. and also there's money outside the market. So what what uh, Mr. Jackson is saying, you got to bring it back. So what do we do well, with the money outside the banking sector? Yeah, but, but listen, I'm, Mr. I'm, I'm out of distraction and I, and I went, but let me just go. Let me just carry on. Okay, he talked about aggregate demand. Aggregate demand is fundamental in economics, right? Where you have to create jobs, income, consumption. And consumption is going down, down, down. In fact, that's reflected in the precipitous drop in the general sales tax, which is the GST. That's a fundamental problem in the economy right now. And that's going to, that has a flow through effect in terms of lower import, okay, lower tariff, uh, 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 lower tariff income taxes on international trade, lower, lower, lower net profit, lower withholding taxes, and all of that. The Liberian economy is contracting. It's contracting very badly because of aggregate demand. That is a problem that needs to be solved. There needs to be some sort of a economic stimulus. But we're not doing quantitative, they're not doing quantitative easing like the Federal Reserve Bank did in, in 2008 and 2009 when they pumped a lot of money into the economy with no relationship to the level of economic activity or the economic growth rate. What the Labron government is trying to, to accomplish now is to remove, is to remove the excess currency that is outside there, find out who owns it, how do we bring it back to the bank? Emre is right. We need, we, need to, we need to have a robust payment system. And I, and I keep explaining about the circular flow. The circular flow is an economic uh, a relationship between producers and consumers. The financial intermediation, the banks intermediate very little of GDP, less than 10% of GDP. In Kenya, more than 50% of GDP is conducted through financial intermediation to the banking system. So you want to, in addition to demonetizing, and then let me give you an example. Kenya just demonetized the old shilling and the value of the shilling rose up so that's an example that you can go you can go research that okay go research that can you just did it i think i think and the reason I did it, the reason kenya did it then it's gonna so come in for a listen, second listen, yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. Money. Hold on. you you have a follow-up before i take leave okay, of it yeah. mr ja okay okay okay, okay mr ja then can i respond to the question before this Liberian no. problem, let me just educate the Liberian population here that's this we have very, very poor and inept financial manager with no practical experience. We have finance ministers in Liberia that have never been a teller at a bank. And now we want these people overnight to, to, to manage an economy of $300 million. So that's why our problem, we have dual currency. 
Well, how many countries in the world do you know that have two currencies? First of all, let me, let me just make a prediction. What this is going to do, two things. And I hope we we'll come back here six months again. The rate is going to pour in further. I can tell you why. The people who have US dollars, what they're trying to achieve is to try to, to uh, uh, take out the, the money that people have outside the bank. You know what the people are going to do? They're going to exchange their money for US dollars and ship it outside the country. They've already exposed their plan. So if I have 20 billion Liberian dollars and I know the government is going to change the money, I'm going to start buying US dollars. And what I was going to do is going to put more pressure on the Liberian dollar. It's a stupid policy. It was not terribly recent. They should handle things that the dual currency. We need one currency in Liberia. We need lower interest rate. He talked about productivity. Why we don't have productivity in Liberia? Because we don't have low interest rates. When you talk about Kenya, Liberia has almost a 14, 18% interest rate. What company do you know is going to be able to borrow at 18%, all right, and, and make a profit? So how do you bring interest rate down? Only the central bank can bring interest rate down, OK? He talked about a financial crisis in America where the government pumped money to the economy. How did the government do it? The government bought stake in the US bank. They bought stake in Goldman Sachs. They gave each of the large banks in America between 20 and $5 billion so that they could reduce their, 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 their so that they could lend to people. We have no mortgage industry. Loans are high. We don't control the bank. So he asked me, if I, if I was making policy in Liberia number one, you won't have eight banks in Liberia controlled by foreigners. You've got no country in the world, including the one we're in, where a lot of foreign individual that is not a citizen of the country to manage a bank. You can't do that in Nigeria. You can't do that in Ghana. You can't do that in America. You can't even work with the federal government if you're not a US citizen. So why do we have presidents of banks in Liberia you went for all five minutes, Mr. Jackson. Yeah. Like I said, I know Alex, you. you keep leaving. You keep leaving. Take leave. 10, take 10, take 10. So, 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 so I'm not going to pay attention to him. Yes. Why would we have? Those are simple things I would do. I would, I would pass I would pass a law. If I don't even have to pass a law, you just have to enforce it to make sure that we will get control of the banking sector, to reduce okay. interest rate, and to capitalize Liberian industry so that we start growing and we start manufacturing so we can reduce input, we can lower our, our trade uh, deficits, and that will boost our, 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 our currency. Not this nonsense they're talking about. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. OK, uh, let me bring in Emre one more time to, to follow oh up, God. and then we can take leave oh of him. Oh, my God. No, oh. Emre was supposed to be here, so we are so, giving him Yes, uh, my follow-up question, my follow-up question. Uh, 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 Mr. Jackson, uh, another question to you. So uh, you talked about the lack of confidence in the uh, banking sector. Uh, how do you create, is there any correlation between uh, printing money and uh, uh, confidence, uh, restoring confidence in the banking sector? Uh, B, how do you create confidence in the banking sector, in the financial sector in Liberia? Okay. It's, 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 can I answer? Yeah, sure. Th thank you, Emre. OK. <laughs> and I will give you this if you go one to minute. That's fine, that's fine. Remember, remember I said, I said that printing money alone is not a panacea for the fundamental problems that we have. And those problems are clearly enumerated by Alex, Emery, and everybody else. We all know what the fundamental problems are. Lack of product, productivity. Uh, uh, a country with two primary commodities, okay, at the, at the vigorous of the international marketplace. Mm -hmm. We know all of that. So his question is, how do you instill confidence in the banking system? Yes. Effective and, money. And, and how does printing money do that? Yes, 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 yes. Now, there is not a correlation between printing money and inspiring confidence in the banking system. But what you want to do in addition to printing money you're not just printing money and infusing, infusing it willy-nilly. What you are doing, you are retrieving the old bank notes we have, which have no value and bringing that money into the, into the financial system for intermediation. So, so, what, so what you want to do, you want to ask the banks to recapitalize. You want to, you want to, you want to ensure the banks have, you want, they, they, they have the quality position. 
capital adequacy ratio, okay, liquidity ratio, both prudential guidelines. You want to have effective monitoring the banks because right now the 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 the, the reason why you have lack of trust in the banking system in the country is because when people go to the bank to get their money, they say no money come tomorrow. Those operational inefficiencies contributing to the lack of trust. So best printing of the money in addition to retooling and fixing the financial architecture. So I cannot guarantee that those will happen. But those are the things that people are proposing that you need a robust payment system, a digital payment system. So in addition to printing new money and retrieving the old money, you will want to do a, 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 a digital platform to have a more robust payment system to consolidate, to consolidate the circular flow <clears throat> so that more commercial transactions are intermediated by the financial system. That will give you sustainable development. And that any economic science will tell you that, any simulation model will tell you that, any computable general equilibrium will tell you that, any DSG model will tell you that. And even any RSLM thing that you talk about, benchmark interest rates, and all of that, we can do that scientifically. It will control the money supply when more of your GDP is intermediated by the financial system. Thank you. I have another caller on the line. Call out your number, N1259. Your name and where you calling from? Yeah, this is Georgia. Today I'm calling for Pittsburgh, PA. Mr. Toto, your question or comment. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my question is to Mr. Jassy. Uh, Mr. Jassy said he opened a statement that we have problems in Liberia to track the monetary system. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if Mr. Jassy can, can, can tell us today what are some of the problems. If the bank, if the new bank note is printed and introduced into the market, and how they're going to track the system that like you complain about, we have problem with, with in, in, in Liberia. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, Mr. Toto. Okay, you want me to answer? Yes, please. I, I don't. Go okay. Ahead. Okay. I'm 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 very surprised that my learned colleague Alex Jones doesn't know that. The Liberian Central Bank has sued Cream AB, and they are in they are in, they are, they, they are in court. Therefore, the money that was printed by Cream, those those denominations and those things with the security features, so those monies can no longer be printed because there is a there's a there's a there's a litigation between the Central Bank and Cream. So that that's a practical reason right there. Why you need to change the currency? Okay. The second practical reason why you need to change the currency is because you don't know how the previous 18.151 billion was infused. It was infused criminally. And what Mr. 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 Alex and his other people have been talking about is the senior age income. What is senior age income? Senior age income is the value of the money minus the cost. The printed $18.151 billion between and, and infused it between 2016 and 2018. The average exchange rate at that time, if you divide it into the, 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 the quantum, you will see that they, had, they earned about 130 million US dollars, the central bank. But nowhere in their financial statement do you see that money. Nowhere did they retire T-bills or T-bonds. And they will look at the, the fiscal option reports of the, of, the, of the Ministry of Finance and Development Planning. No extraordinary income came into that. When we were doing our study, and you need to, you know, you need to let me just walk you through this, but this is extremely important. I asked former central bank officials why they did not report senior income. Mr. Mr. Jackson. I think it's important. This is no, a, I mean, I, Because he asked a specific question. Yeah, but I did, but I'm, I'm yeah, walking so, through so that. I want to bring in, I want to bring in, I don't want you to. Uh, no, no, listen, I don't want to lose, I beg you, man. Let me just finish it because the, 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 the public needs to know 
that there was a criminal facilitation. No, I, I don't want. I don't want you to keep going to that money that was printed. It, so I, I want. I want uh, to bring in another call out to bring in or uh, Alex. You have answered the no, question. So let me. Okay. Yeah, you've answered the question. You don't want the public to know how the Labron people were screwed, right? <laughs> It's not. It's not. It's not the. Uh, it's not the question that was asked. No, but no, but I answer it. But they have a close relationship to that. Okay. You, you can come. You can come back. Uh, I have a caller on the line. Call out your name and where you calling from. Okay, my name is Richard. I'm calling from Melbourne, Australia. How are you? I'm great, Richard from Australia. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. Your question or comment? Yeah, my 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 question goes to Mr. Alice Jones. Okay. He's talking about, you know, one of his recommendations when when Mr. Jackson asked him was that, you know, was that he was going to, you know, establish a stock market. <laughs> and he called me a Liberia. It doesn't have any output. We don't have, we, we, we don't have anything that will export to the, to, to, to the, to the world states, you know, export, the raw material mm. that will attract investors. For you to come in and, and establish a, 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 a stock market, and secondly, when he talked about laboratories to take control of their banking, of their own banking institution. Remember now, those banks are owned by foreign investors. How do we know how many Liberian investors have share in those banks? So I think sometimes when we're talking, we just need to do a little bit of research. We, Liberia is not America. Let us start comparing Liberia to American system. We've got a long way to go, but we need to do the right thing. And some of the right thing we're doing now is cleaning the mess. We don't know how much money in circulation when we're talking about changing the currency. This is what we need to do. So when people go to the central bank to exchange the, the current library dollar to the new currency, we're gonna, the, the central bank going to ask them, where did you get the money? Can you verify your income? And also, I, I want to thank you know Samuel Jackson for 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 his explanation. He's on point. He's one of the best we have. In, even though sometimes you know he have his own political view, but let us respect him. He's the best in this business. Thank you. Th thank you, Alex. That was your question. Well, I, I don't understand the main question. Okay, let me let me put it in the first place. He said. So I would just comment. I would just comment generally. And no, let me let me explain his question. He said you mentioned about the stock stock market. Uh, Liberia is not exporting anything, so it's like uh, Liberia. We don't have the um, the kind of system to have a stock market. That was his first question. Okay, so let, let me let me answer that question. Rwanda has a stock market. Ghana has a stock market. Nigeria has a stock market. Kenya has a stock market. So all these these countries are not America. <laughs> Three shares, which is they only have one hundred thousand people. They have a stock market. Ethiopia has a stock market. So that nonsense about, oh, we don't have this, we shouldn't compare. I'm not comparing Liberia with America. Okay, it doesn't make any sense. They're two different economies. They have different dynamics. But there are practical things that we can do. And one is, he talked about, we don't export anything. The solutions I'm giving will enable you to produce and export things. And Liberians don't want to do that. If Mr. Samuel Jackson and the others are so good, why don't they have manufacturing in Liberia? Why don't they make bicycle tires? Why don't they make a, 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 a salt? So we're not going to solve our problem by printing new money or changing money. We're going to solve our problem just the same way how Ghana and, and, and Ethiopia and Rwanda solve the problem. They build manufacturing entities that now you can go to a, a store in UK or America. You can buy Rwanda tea. You can buy Rwanda coffee. We produce coffee in Liberia. Why should we be sending coffee, raw coffee abroad? How much would it take on the Liberian government through LBDR to take a few hundred thousand dollars and open up coffee processing plant and let Mr. Jackson manage that since he's the best in the country? So to sit here and say that we don't have solution, not because you don't know a solution, I mean, it doesn't exist. Our solution is in manufacturing. And we choose not to do that. We want to harmonize program. We want to have dual currency. Why do we have dual currency? Rwanda does not have dual currency. Okay, Haiti does not have dual currency. J 
Jamaica does not have dual currency. And to answer the question, what he's talking about, what, what, what the logic they're trying to say that people will go to the central bank with their wee borrowers or like grand dollar, and then the central bank will ask them, where did you get this money from? That's it, that, that is so elementary. Nobody's going to do that. The people with the wee borrow, because we have dual currency, are going to go in the black market and change all of the Labrand dollar to US dollars before you change your currency. That is, that is common sense. You want to grow your economy, you have to, first of all, bring better management at your banks. Rwanda, there are over eight, nine banks in Rwanda or, and are giving countries that literally on the same level of Liberia. Mr. Okay, I'm not giving Mr. Norway Mr. or Finland or UK. The problem in Liberia, I would say people like Samuel Jackson, because they come here to talk about lender regression and they're spinning like brain people ahead and they're talking about M2 and M3. And because people don't know what they're talking about, it sounds so interesting. But we have to have practical solutions. We need people Th who you. Are, can solve problems of farming, manufacturing, building our, our universities, having thank a mortgage you, markets and things like that. Thank you. I have a question here on Facebook for you, Mr. Jones, from Eric N. Gunter, or Gunlaw. He said, Mr. Jones, how can we manage the two types of currency with low security, where over 70% is out of the banking sector with 7% of Liberians with bank accounts? The answer to that is very simple, we cannot. We have to first make the policy, the central bank has to come up and, and, and adopt the library dollar first. So you put in the carriage before the horse. You have in all these other policies that you're talking about, harmonization, which doesn't make any economic sense. I have never heard that word in finance because everybody has different skills levels. The same job that I do, somebody is paid either less or more than I do because of you know, my background or that person's background. And we spend all this time to earn these people. And that's the biggest idea they can come up with. Oh, let, let's do budget. First of all, the finance minister should not even be talking about budget. That's way above it. He should be talking about how you, 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 you capitalize our banks, how you strengthen our economy, our manufacturing, how you reduce interest rates. All right, how you reduce the trade deficit, which, which is why I'm causing the problem. How you increase our employment. We have a country with almost 80% unemployment. We, he, he himself said that we don't have a formal sector. How do you create a formal can sector? I, you I, create a formal sector by having a formal industries. You don't have any industries in Liberia that is owned by Liberia. So there, that's why you don't have a formal sector. So if our finance minister and our central bank and Samuel Jackson and his friends can go to the table and come up with a better idea, then some of us will listen. But right now, it's rubbish to talk it. It makes no economic or financial sense. And nobody has told them that. And that's what they're perusing around the place, talking about economic policy, where you don't even, you can't even control unemployment rate. Th thank you. Mr. Jackson, your response? Well, first of all, first of all, I feel, I feel the hurt that Mr. Jones and other Liberians feel because Liberia is, 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 is the poorest country on the planet and it's been mismanaged for a long number of years. So I can understand the cynicism that people like him will and have. And thanks to people like you. Yeah, well, you know, uh, I, I can assure you that I will be donating all of my papers to the University of Liberia so you can see what I have proposed. First of all, I, I started this conversation by telling you I don't believe in no top-down economic development uh, paradigm. Doesn't work, supply side never work anywhere. I'm completely, completely opposed to supply side economics. I like to have more bottoms of economic development. The things that should have been done in the last 12 years, or last 14 years, in our post-war dispensation, diversify economic output, uh, we had the Liberian Agricultural Sector Investment, Liberian Agricultural Sector Investment Plan. They failed. Okay. The, 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 the post-Ebola recovery strategy paper is a piece of toilet paper. The international community, they, were, they asked them for three billion, they won't give them. Then they criminally and diabolically infused this quantum of money. They, they, and I will explain the senior rich income is extremely important for people to know that the government of Ellen Johnson shall leave in the Unity Party earned over $130 million. When I queried them, officials, 
when I was doing the recent study, they said that IMF told them not to declare and report any senior rich income. But Alex, let me just give you a secret. You have not seen the recent proposal sent to the national legislature by the central bank. You know, being in America, you're isolated. If you, were in, you were, if you were in Liberia, maybe somebody like Senator Cooper will call you. I don't need to be in Liberia. It should be published. Finish. It should be published on the on, website. Let me finish. Let me finish. If I had not been in Liberia, I would not have seen the proposal from the Central Bank of Liberia that talks exactly about senior rich income of 132.9 million to be earned from infusing, from printing the 35 billion, and also the cost of 31 million. I wouldn't know that. I would know also all of the 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 the, the tenets of that proposal. You haven't seen it. So if you haven't seen it, how can you be opposed to it? This your legislators, the people who have oversight, should should get it. Should have a should have public hearing. These are the things you should be demanding. This kind of discussion we are having here on on on, 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 on social media, this is the kind of discussion we should be having at the legislature. The legislature doesn't have any any research and planning bureau, okay, of any note of people that know and have quantitative scales. They can't determine how much money to print. They don't know what the quantitative theory of money is. They never heard of Nicholas Copernicus. They never heard of, uh, of, of Adam Smith. Why, why would a yeah. little hear about Nicholas Copernicus and... <laughs> it is important because if, if, you don't, if you know QTM, you would not print excess amount of money okay. out of Kelta with economic growth rate. That's, that's the origin of economic thought. The origin thank you. of economic thought. Th thank you, Mr. Jackson. Th thank you. Hold on, hold on. It, it pities my heart that the only argument anybody, any economist in Liberia or financial wizard in Liberia can make is you now on the ground. Okay. I can go to any website. Listen, Alex. I can Alex, go to. I, I can go. Hold on. Now. Yeah, we, we get, I, we get with that. The, with the, with, with the invention of internet and the invention of Adam Smith did not travel around the world to every country. He did not even leave much of Europe, and he invented. Capitalism we live in. Okay. He read. Alex. Liberians need to read. Let me just finish. The problem with our Liberian policy maker, they don't read because they even write. How can you become finance minister or deputy finance minister when you have not published one financial paper that anybody can critique? You you written a book, and that's why I will talk to you because at least you you, you put your ideas on paper. Most of these people can't even write a, 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 a financial policy. I shouldn't, if, 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 if that bureau should be where I have to go and know the, 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 the people in the, in the government or people at the central bank before I get information, then we're headed for disaster. That is public knowledge. All our information should be on the website. We spend hundreds of thousands of dollars. We hire IT people. The Federal Reserve, you talked about, let me, make your, let me make a correction. Every policy in America on the Federal Reserve is published, okay, including the balance sheet. M1, M2, all is published, and M3. So and let me, let me just say, the only study. information, let me finish, let me finish, let me, let me, let me finish, let me finish, let me, let me, let me finish, let me finish, let, let me finish, let me, I'm not going to, let you interrupt me, let me finish, okay? What the Federal Reserve does not publish is every quarter, every quarter, the Federal Reserve have a two-day meeting where they set interest rate policy. And during those two days time, it's called blackout time. When they're done with the two days meeting, they have a press conference at two o'clock. They publish the minutes of the of, of the of the FOMC for everybody to see it. So why should I have to go in Liberia to get personal information, or why do I have to go to somebody to get the information that's supposed to be for the public? Yeah. Because you use that information for academic research. No, yes. Alex. But I'm okay. asking you, uh, Alex. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Sam. The last quarter, which is published. And you don't know that. All right. Is there? I don't. I, I can't. I can't tell you every line because in all the reports that are there. But what I can tell you that the information is the, the information is there or it should okay. be there. Okay. 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 Order. Order, please. 
know. Order, please. It's not going to hurt you that you don't know. Okay, that's the, we, you. You said you that, Mr. Jackson. Like Mr. Jackson, you haven't followed it like an economist, M Mr. Jackson. What you do, you are dabbing and dipping and going all around. This no, is all my research that I do on like Europe is, is right. coming from all this reputable is, information. I know. I know. The problem is not. All right. Let, let me. Let, Oh, oh, two of you, I've, I've muted the two of you. Hold on, hold on, I've muted you. you, you we can go back and forth. Now like we can this. have a civil last debate. Yeah, we, we can go back and forth like that. Let me bring in my, my, my last caller. Call out your name and where you calling from? My name is Magdala F. Nyanko. I'm calling from Minnesota. Mag Magdala Yanton. Welcome Mag to Focus Magdala on Nigeria. Nyanko. Huh? Yeah, thank you very much for. Thank you very much for for inviting me on your show. I want to address a few things tonight. This is my brother. I, I just want to talk, I want to comment a little bit about the, the call I just called. You see, one of your studio guests, Samuel Jackson, he's saying that you have to go to Liberia before you can get certain information from Central Bank. You know, the government of Liberia, they are making big mistakes. Trying to use Samuel Jack Jackson to help our economy in Liberia is very bad. That man lay but where by drink on the time, drink oh. drink general time. Oh, come on, right now man. they have a lot of young brain. They have a lot of young brain. Come on now. Those young guys should come and have the sense. Yeah. Those young guys should come no, and have the sense. That's what I'm Hold on, call on. Hold on, call on. It's not about it's not about age or when you learn it. This man, you keep no, calling but, it. No, but 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 Dennis, I we have more than one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so so that, 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 you want to compare to the You want to compare to the time with that now. You want to be that kind of with with that? We are in a modern world, my brother. We are in a modern world. Some of John Johnson using those days that like brother you are asking. We have we all have we all have private world market. We have Tima. We are all. If you are putting that down, we call it turn down now. Okay, okay. Some of John Johnson. Okay. No, call yeah. up. Okay. Uh, uh, hold on. Make your point on the printing of new money. Forget about you know when Samuel Jackson started. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Printing of new money will have buy in power on our system. Our right. money, our money will give value. Our money will give value. I, I, they will be like about five hundred or one hundred for one hour US, one US dollar brother. Printing new money is not a way out. Maybe I don't use the food and I brought government. They use the food and now you give people a job for you. Where you where they pay? He's working on the time. We're gonna make goods. We're gonna make free money. So, so you call the call government so they can use it. They can go away and add here. That man told me he was deceiving the liberal government, brother. Mr. Oh. Johnson is not doing. He's not doing the running for the liberal government. He was deceiving the government. Trust me. That means you cannot use the word for the for the policy. We are in the money world. Thank, thank, thank we you. We are in the money world, Mr. Johnson. Th thank we you. We are in the money world. Thank you very much for having me on your program. Thank you. Th thank you. Okay. Let, let me let me, no hold on hold on no hold on hold on. Hold on. Let, let me get it. Let me get it. Next caller. Oh, but I mean, but how can you not let us respond? Then you go get another another caller. Can you let? Can you give me some some time? Let me let me work on this. I don't. I mean, but the, the, but 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 the issue hot on the floor. Let me respond. No, no. The, the issue the issue you presented is not hot. He said, you know, you open your window. I agree with him. I but give give, give give me a let chance to handle this. I agree with him. <laughs> Let me tell you why I agree with a man. Uh, did the I man stop you? Stop me. Did, did I stop you? I stop me. Let me please. Let me, Janice, please, I beg you. This man brought the whole conversation to an end. The last uh, 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 16 years, only young people have run your government. No old man has been Minister of Finance and Development Planning. You have Amra Kone. You have Kafuan, you have Bama Kamara, you got Sambia Tuwe. Okay? Those are the people that have been running your development planning for the last 16 years. Sambia Jassi, that they come, you are deep that they're getting small money to write MDG report. That all, because some of you don't have the discipline to write the MDG report. So your young people in their 50s and 40s have been running the show. And we got the poorest country on the planet. So he's right. We're supposed to leave South Africa and get poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. You don't need no old brains. You don't need Adam Smith. Adam Smith been dead. You don't need 
And I want to agree with and, and I want to agree with, with Mr. Jackson. But keep in mind, even though you have young people running the Ministry of Finance, you have also a very aged person running the country for the last 16 years. Somebody who claimed to have worked for World Bank and has been around since taught to, well, Minister of Finance in 1970. She was caught in the shot. She was setting the she was the chief economist of Liberia. So I don't go with the age thing or go with what are you in Liberia or not. What I go with is not. And I can tell you, if the Liberian government can come up with a logical reason why they want to change the policy, I will support them. Mm -hmm. So I want you to go back to the ministry and go back to, to, to where you say the paper is and help them write that paper to convince the world, because I'm not the only person going to be reading that paper. The IMF is going to read it. Okay, which you need money for, you need to enter the program. They're going to read it. The World Bank is going to read it. The investors are going to read our paperwork. Where are you telling them that you can just book up one money and change the currency? And then you are at the same time encouraging people to come into the country to thank, invest. Thank, thank you, Mr. Jones. We are almost out of time. Let me bring in my last caller. And that's why I didn't want us to go into this uh, age thing because all this and name calling about, you know, this person was this, you know, so, but let's leave that. Let me go to my last caller from our calling from 215. Call out your name and where you calling from? Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, my name is my, my name is Mark Cody, and I call from uh, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Mark, welcome to Focus on Liberia. You'll be our last caller. Your question or comment. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the chance to participate in your in your your program. I and I'm sorry if uh, my concern had been addressed earlier and I wasn't paying attention because I just stumbled on this and I, I was activated to, to make uh, an in way okay. <clears throat> to, to take back. But this is my question to the brother who is pro-printing of money and what I feel. Uh, during the days on these series of investigations that have gone on in Liberia, concerning the uh, alleged $16 million, the missing of the $16 million, there were, there, were, there were investigative reports that were given to our government in Liberia, even though things have, those reports have not been addressed adequately, in my opinion. And, and one of the reports was that of the Crow's report, which stated that the procedure that was, uh, that was used to print the money and shape to Liberia uh, was not well, good policies, good, good procedures were not followed. Yeah. Okay, that is uh, nationally or uh, nationally, but uh, conventional practice was not followed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so my question is, has, has that been addressed? Right. Has that issue been addressed prior to talking about this printing of another money? If, if, that has been addressed. Then let's say let's let me bring in my the other component of my uh, my question. Okay. I was a kid in nineteen in the, in the nineteen the eighties. Okay, we were using dual coins. That yeah. dual coin was powerful in terms of in terms of strength, so in terms of purchasing power. It was it was it was powerful. But since that money was changed to the JJ at the time, the uh, the purchasing power of that money dropped. Mm. You see? So Charles did also came and changed the GG to something else. And the, again, the strength of the money dropped. So every mm. time we make these changes or <laughs> print new money, our money can be devalued. Th okay? So why would it be, my question to your, your, your other host who is in favor of printing money, why would printing money be the necessary thing to do right now, when every time we print money, our money can be devalued. Why is it necessary right now? That's Thank my question. You. Those are my questions. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, the, the issue that led to the first money that were printed are not being addressed, and you're doing printing new one. The that's question not, is that that's not true. Okay. I just have the trial. There's a trial of five CBL officials currently being held at the Temple of Justice in Monrovia, where they have been prosecuted for
for criminally and you diabolically printing the money. You said they are held at the Temple of Justice. You don't hold people at Temple of Justice. <laughs> I said. I, I think said, he means in prison. I, I, I said the trial. Uh, can I can I just make a can I just make no, a no, follow no, up? No 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 no. My man, I beg you. You you ask your question. Let me go ask ahead. it. Go, go ahead. ahead. You let you let fussing business. You let fussing because <laughs> yeah. you know you not gonna give me chance to answer the question. Yeah, yeah that, go, go ahead. Is a dice. You, you have the flow. Answer. I give you the answer. The answer is we're bringing closer to it. The people are being tried at the temple of justice. Okay. That, that is what is being done about it. So if you didn't know that, you know it now. The second thing is, look, all of, all, I understand your points of view. You, you ought to be cynical. There's no trust in constituted authority in Liberia. I'm well aware of that. I, I know about no productivity. I know about corruption. I know about how deep, deep, deep in rotting the system is. I'm not here to defend the system. I'm just basically here to, to give you some common sense approach to current economic circumstances based upon my experience. And I'm telling you now, you don't know who is holding the quantum of that money outside. You better take that money out of the hands of those people and try to bring it back into the banking system so you can be able to monitor it. Kenya just did it. They, 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 they did it because they wanted to to, to get rid of the illicit money that was floating around in the economy that was undermining Kenya's economic development. And if we take that money out, the 95% of that money that is outside of the banking system, and we bring that money to the banking system, and we improve the circular flow, then we can start dealing. I told you, I ask you, Alex, what are some of the short run things you would do for macroeconomic stability, you couldn't give me an answer. No, no, don't, don't go and to then, Alex yet. Let, let's address he, he the question. He said, you haven't heard the answer I said. He, yeah, you, he, he said, Alex, wait. You say, wait. He said, you say, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, Mr. Jackson. I said, oh. short stabilization. Mr. Jackson. Stability. Mr. If Jackson. OK. Mr. Jackson. Tell me again. No, 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 no. It's, it's not Alex. Somebody asked you a question. So. He said, he answered the question. You said the, the people are on trial. He said, yes. those issues, have those issues been addressed? Having the people on trial, those does he issues, address the issue? Those issues in terms of the criminal issue will be yeah. addressed. The macroeconomic issue will be is dependent upon, like one of the good things is that- well, If the loopholes are not closed and you are but, doing the same thing, what but, result do you expect? How do you, who told you that loopholes are not closed? No, but talk to us about it. That was his question. Yes, yes. Okay, I have the opportunity. I'll tell you. Please. I told you I was very clear. The first thing, Liberia is migrating to a single currency, the Liberian dollar. Just, just understand that that will happen. But as an economist, you know, and if, as a financial man, you can't just do it over there. You have to migrate because you have to be able to absorb the, the shocks over a period of time. So what we're doing is we try to increase the transactional demand for Liberian dollars by denominating more goods and services in Liberian dollars. That's the first thing you do. The second thing you do, people pay taxes in Liberian dollars. Then your wage bill, we talk about harmonization, your wage bill, which is 66% of recurring expenditure, you want to pay that in Liberian dollars. Then the last thing you do before you go to full uh, 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 Liberian dollar is the, the incoming remittances. You want to pay 100% in Liberian dollars. That what it will automatically do, the reserve of the central bank will be increasing. Instead of it being like 250, 190 or something, it's going to go to four or 500 because in one remittances are between 400 to 450 million dollars a year. And when times are good, it sometimes go to 500, 600 million. When the central bank has more than three months of input cover in the external sector, in the combination with the combination of your special drawing rights, that will improve the external sector. And once you do the other fundamental things like trying to diversify output, but those are all 
medium to long term strategies in terms of productivity. You know, productivity cannot be improved in the short run, but you can't do anything in this country right now. Why do you have 28.5% inflation? Who will invest in that environment? You talk about interest rates are high. Interest rates are high because the inflation is high, Alex. That's, that's the function of the marketplace. That's the you. So how do you reduce it? By changing the currency? No. But okay, but then why are you changing? If you want to address, hold on. If you want to address, okay. Interest rate. You want Mr. to die. The next going to go on forever. He yeah, has to give other people we, a chance. We are, we are about to conclude because you will wrap okay. all this up in your closing statement. So right. I, I want to. Well, let me just respond to his to his answer because he made a statement, a, a policy, and I want to correct it. Yeah, and please do he, that in one minute. Ask me seconds. what are the media uh, uh, actions that if I was advising the government to take, and I told him one. You have to let Liberians manage their own financial and banking system instead of foreigners doing it. And they are the one, you, what you call capital flight. Okay? Your Echo Bank in Liberia, they come to Liberia. People deposit US dollars in the, in, in the Echo Bank. All the shareholders of Echo Bank and, 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 and First Bank yeah. and all these banks, uh, 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 Access Bank, they're in Nigeria and Ghana. So we're paying dividend in foreign, current, foreign exchange to the shareholders. In another country, so the first thing I would do, all right, if I if I was managing the Liberian economy, is to first of all make sure that Liberian banks are owned overwhelmingly by Liberians and managed by Liberians. And maybe I would take somebody like you and put you over one of the bank, so you can start going around and you you have something to contribute your 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 experience and your expertise instead of the political thing because we need to manage our own economy. So let's clarify that. That's what I would do. And I think if you don't do that, any other thing you do is not going to have any, any consequence. Okay. Two, you talk about inflation, control inflation. You do not control inflation by changing currency. If that's the case, then you and every other country in the world, as soon as they have a high inflation, they will change their currency. It's common sense. No country changes their currency because inflation is high. Okay? Inflation is a, it's a model. It can be price inflation because of lack of manufacturing and scarcity, or it can be demand uh, 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 inflation, where you have uh, too many goods, or too many uh, people chasing a few uh, of goods and services. In Liberia case, I think it's a combination of both. You have price inflation, and then you have the uh, demand, where the goods in Liberia are scarce because they're not manufactured in Liberia. To address that problem, again, I never criticize without giving a solution. One, Get hold of your bank. Capitalize your bank. Let the banks invest in Liberian manufacturing, fishing, agriculture, housing. You, I listened to the uh, economic uh, investment forum. It was a joke because I listened to people that were sitting top it, go to a forum like that and talk about agriculture. When he was the one who managed, who, who ran the agriculture, followed the ones who ran agriculture development bank into the ground. He was CEO of agriculture bank. And you want to talk, and you minister of commerce, and you don't have one Liberian industry, and then you talk telling Liberian people, yes, we need to invest in Liberia. How are you going to do that? You want to go call uh, 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 Dongo Day to come to Liberia to invest Th when Thank you, you have the people there? Th Thank you, Alex. Okay. Thank you. All right. I, I want to I want to thank you, gentlemen, tonight for for the debate, and uh, it being very very uh, informative. So I want to say thank you. Uh, there are people who are giving scores on the uh, on, on on Facebook, but we're not going to. It's not scientific, so we're not going to read the scores tonight. But I, I appreciate your time. Now, in conclusion, this is what I want you to do. Almost the same way you started, because the questions that really uh, we have been tussling over is how does printing new money fix all these issues? So, Mr. Jackson, I want you to include that. In your summary, as you as you uh, wrap up, and Mr. Jones, I want you to tell me why not, why not this uh, money supply, and what other solutions do you have instead of printing new currency? So we will start with you first. We started with Mr. Jackson. So Mr. Jones, we want to right. start with you to. Uh, well, of course, I, I, I want to thank you for the time and for the platform. It's been an honor to come here uh, to you know, discuss that great issue. I'm not a politician. I do not hope to be. But when it comes to 
issues like technical issues, I think we should talk to people who have some degree of knowledge. And Samuel Jackson is one of those people. So I'm very privileged to have a conversation with him. I do disagree with him on a lot of issues, as I do with many of the Liberians or, 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 or managers. But it doesn't mean I don't have respect for him. I have a, a lot of respect for Mr. Jackson, and I will call him a friend. When it comes down to the discussion, we will differ. And we'll see who's right in, in six months from now or one year from now. In fact, if Mr. Jackson is right, I will, I will donate or thousand dollars to any charity of his choice. If they change the Liberian currency and the interest rate, I mean, the inflation rate drops and the currency drops, I will give a thousand dollars of my hard earned money to any charity that he chooses. So that's a challenge there. To conclude, in terms of what I said first, Liberia has a lot of issues, but they have to have the people to solve those issues. The first thing I said is the, the Liberia management team, the central bank governor, the finance minister, they've done a very poor job. They focus on things that we all research. They have not recruited the right people in areas, in technical areas. They have no substantial policy. They jump around from one place to another, seeing what is popular. You have to face the real issue. The real issue in Liberia is employment. And how do you fix employment? You fix employment by building industries. Everywhere in the world, you don't employ people just by the government. You employ people by having jobs, light industries, fishing, uh, making cement, all these little things. And the way countries do that is through the central bank interest rate policies. They give this, the, their local banks low interest rate, in, in most cases, 1%, 2%, or 3%, so that those banks can now give corporations and, and Liberia industry a good rate so they can hire people and build manufacturing, all of which none of the Liberian government policy reflects, not for in the last 16 years, nobody has even talked about these things. We sit there and we let other people manage our economy and we walk around and say we're economists and we're financial experts. We are willing, I'm willing to help. I don't need a job in Liberia to help the government. I've written policies, I've written papers and given recommendations. One of my recommendations is simply get Liberians, get Liberians together, what do they do it by telephone or do it? Let them sit down and come up with a comprehensive policy on the economy. I hope Mr. Weir is listening, but that's what he needs to do because his economist and his uh, economic thing has failed him. No country in West Africa right now has uh, what you call GDP projection has been devalued, have been downgraded like that bureau in 18 months. Not Sierra no, not even Guinea. So there's something wrong with that picture. And the way you fix things is for you start with people. If people don't solve the problem, you need to get rid of them. You can't have the same, you can put a well, new wine or old wine skin. And that's the problem in Liberia. We want to keep using the same recycle people, the same old idea. Thank you again. And uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Jackson. And at any time, I'll be willing to come on with you or anybody. Thank you so much, Mr. Jones, for your time. And Mr. Jackson, if you can adjust your, your, your camera a little bit so that we can see that. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, great. You you made some points, they're all very emotional. Number, no, fact number one, you have nine banks, eight foreign owned. So that's a, that's a reason, that's a, that's a practical reason why, why, why that is so. The lack of savings in Liberia, the lack of income, who Liberian can put together monies to open a bank with a capitalization of $10 million doesn't exist. Okay, so that's the first fallacy. You have, you have eight Nigerian or foreign banks in the country, and they're doing reasonably well in terms of trying to intermediate uh, trade. They do some uh, uh, financing with the real estate and all of that. Are they perfect? Of course not. Do we need more Liberian equity participation? Fine. Well, the printing of $35 billion, is there a panacea for all of the problems that you see, that you are surrounded by, that is swirling in your head, that you want to be resolved automatically? Of course not. So no one with any, with two brains, two brain cells will say that printing new money will automatically reduce inflation, with improved productivity and all of that. But you have a practical problem. The practical problem is you have 95% of your money aggregate, LeBron Dollar Company, 
which is 31% of the money supply outside of the banking system. How do you bring that? You have a high degree of informality. How do you improve financial inclusion? <coughs> you can't do financial inclusion <coughs> with a current financial architecture. Meaning, what are you doing? Go, go ahead. Okay. I mean, I hope you have done that when he was on, man. You, you go did. ahead. You, you, were, you, you, were, you were coughing. I didn't want the people to see you <laughs> coughing and doing that. Okay. Okay. But basically... Just give me a chance to host this show, please, Mr. Jackson. No, but I understand what I mean. But I mean, coughing is a, is a, is a human bodily function. It's not a big deal. Okay. So the point I was trying to make that I was being distracted is... No, you distracted yourself. All, I understand all of the problems and all of the issues... All of the fundamental problems that, I mean, lack of productivity again, uh, or the, I mean, you know, corruption and all of those things. But the first thing that must happen in this triage, the economic triage, you have to improve the value, the value of your money, you, which is because money is a store of value. If that, val if that store of value is out there and you don't know where it is, you need to quantify that store of value. You can't do it when people criminally and diabolically infuse $18.151 billion into the money supply. You need to retrieve that money. Once you retrieve that money, once you have control over it, you can improve the circular flow. Banks have to intermediate commercial transactions. You have to go to a digital platform. You can't go to a digital platform with operational inefficiencies within the banking system. You can't go to improve productivity when banks don't intermediate economic development. The banks play a very critical role in development. Interest rates, why are interest rates high? Liberia is a high risk area. That's a direct relationship between risk and interest rate. I mean, I thought Alex would know that, okay? That's the reason why interest rates are high. The cost of capital. I thought Alex would know that. Okay, we don't. We don't have. We don't have an open market policy or a committee like the Federal Reserve Bank because the tools to control the money supply are very limited. You have one tool, and that one tool strictly is the reserve ratio. If you're only using the reserve ratio, you are not using discount rate. Fed funds rate, and you're not using other open market tools, either quantitative easing or contraction of the money supply. You don't mm -hmm. have the tools because you have a dual currency. Sure. You, don't, you can't control 70% of the money supply. That's why, Alex, you have the situation you, you are in today. You, you can wrap up now. Okay, so there is no magical wand that you can wave. And Alex Jones, I want to see one paper that you have written that gave clear cut policy recommendations on macroeconomic stability. I'm not impressed with what you told me tonight about your stock market and your. <coughs> and that your was your idea. That was your idea. You but said that, I was the yeah, but not, that, That's not a short run stabilization policy. But that's what you said. That's what you told our brand people that I would need a for real stock exchange. I, I, I never said the stock okay. market is okay. stabilization, and you know that. So Mr. 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 Jackson, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Jackson, Jackson. Talking you, you, went, you went over your time, and I thought Ellis That's would okay. know that. That's okay. <laughs> well, I, mean, but, I mean, the thing is, it was a pleasure, and I hope you come back. You know, that, I hope you was, come back. That, that was a future. joke when I said, because you, you concluded with, I thought Ellis would know that, so I said, you went over your time, and I thought Ellis <laughs> I mean, would know that. Because he keeps talking about it. I do know that. that. And he doesn't okay. talk about the cost. So of I do know control. that, Mr. He Jackson. He should know that. You're right. And you should know that. I do know that. Yeah. So, so, so thank you very much. If I didn't hear anything in economic before, I heard the quantum value of money. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jackson, I want to thank you so much, Mr. Jones. Thank you so very much for all our uh, value, value viewers. We want to say thank you so much for hanging in here with us tonight. It's after 10. Most of you, the show was canceled earlier or rescheduled, and we have to uh, kind of bring it back on. Mr. Jackson, you know, is animated. He has these ideas that he wants to uh, put.
both forward. So he really encouraged us to still have the show. We were able to get Mr. Jones uh, within 30 minutes. He was having fun during happy hour and we're able to get him from there. So I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate well, that's it. Well, at least I, I, I think this was fun. So right. yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Tomorrow at one o'clock, we're going to have our economic forum. We're going to be discussing agriculture in the Liberian economy. We have a guy in Liberia who is who's also an economy and have his farm. He's going to be joining Dr. Economist and Professor Dr. George Gompu on the economic forum tomorrow at 1 p.m. Please, please, please tune in. Also on Sunday at 6, we're going to continue our African unity and collaboration. So we're going to be speaking with someone from Sierra Leone and also from South Africa. Well, focus on Liberia is where we do it all, man. So keep your dial tone here. We love you and we want you to keep coming back. We cover everything. Our goal here is to elevate, to promote, and educate all things Liberia. Somewhere else, you will hear all politics. Here, we discuss everything so as to elevate, promote, and educate our country. And uh, it, people are not used to, you know, someone being, or a station like this, being, you know, neutral. But yes, it can be done. Our community, our society, our Liberian polity is so polarized that even if you tell somebody hello, you either sedition or you opposition. Here, we want to also say that people that come on the show, their views are strictly their views. They do not represent focus on Liberia. I want to thank everyone for coming. Keep supporting us and join us tomorrow as we continue our programming. Until next time, my name is Dennis Ja, wishing you a good and godly night. Let's talk to you, Mr. Jack.